Brazil is booming. Part of the reason it's booming is because at every pump in Brazil, people have a choice. What we have today is a carryover from the 70s, and it's the solution. In 75, on the first oil crisis, we decided to replace oil by biofuels. We imported 90% of our oil at that time. It was decided that every service station had to have an ethanol pump. With almost the same physical size as the United States, Brazil is the most successful gasoline replacement program in the world. To make such a bold change required a bold leader. Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva grew up poor and became an activist fighting for the rights of workers. He ran three times unsuccessfully before becoming president of Brazil in 2002. Lula da Silva has been elected president of Brazil with the largest margin of victory in the country's history. Mr. da Silva is the first working class president in the country's history. He served two terms as president and left office as popular as a rock star. Under his leadership, Brazil's economy grew by the trillions. All foreign debts were repaid. And millions of people who had been starving were now fed. But perhaps the biggest achievement of Lula's administration was something no other country has done. Complete and total independence from foreign oil. ficar assim conversando com ele. Mas aí o senhor vai ficar ouvindo a minha introdução. Muito chato, o senhor vai ter que ficar ouvindo a minha voz. É? É melhor tirar e... Que tínhamos capacidade de produzir e que tínhamos capacidade de ter um combustível menos poluente. Ah, Começou-se a produzir no Brasil, então, um carro flexível. Com a escolha de fuel agora em every pump, the next task was to create a car that could take advantage of that. Enter the flex fuel car. Um carro flex fuel, que você pode utilizar 100% de gasolina, 100% de etanol, 50%, 50%, a mistura que você quiser fazer e o carro funciona adequadamente. If you take a car, gasoline car, to make it a flex car, that means it can take 100% ethanol, costs uh, per vehicle no more than $150. That's how much it costs. Uma pequena adaptação no módulo e aí com isso o carro consegue funcionar normalmente. And sure enough, uh, they hit a nerve. The consumer loves it. People in Brazil used to say, if I can have the option of choosing the fuel, why not? Here we have a permanent competition between ethanol and gasoline in all gas stations, which is very good for the consumer. Hoje eu abasteci com álcool e dou preferência abastecer com álcool. Para mim ele é mais econômico e e um carro que anda bem, é durável, é. Tô satisfeito. Além de ser mais barato, a gente tem uma produção muito muito forte no Brasil. Ethanol is alcohol that's made by fermenting sugars. Ethanol can be made from a wide variety of substances, but in Brazil, they use a crop they've been growing for 500 years. The food versus fuel debate really doesn't work in Brazil because there's nothing being displaced in order to make ethanol. You're talking about millions of hectares that are not planted with anything. The fact that you're planting sugarcane to make ethanol is not displacing any food production. Brazil's choice of ethanol as an alternative not only fueled their cars, it fueled their economy. Well, there's no question about the importance of the ethanol economically. Now, the cane industry employs eight times more jobs than the oil industry creates in Brazil. In eight years here in Brazil, we take 40 million Brazilians to the media class. Sugarcane works in Brazil. But every place can have its own unique solution. Nós precisamos investir em combustível 
sabe, alternativo de primeira, de segunda geração, de terceira geração. O mundo precisa disso. With strong leadership and political will, Brazil, a country much like the United States, achieved what people thought was impossible. A choice at the pump. And with that, they broke a monopoly. Eu, eu sou um sonhador. Eu acredito que nós vamos conquistar, sabe, que o mundo aprenda a viver sem o petróleo.